Welcome to the uh, January 16th meeting for the Board of Trustees for Johnson County Community College. I now call this meeting to order. Would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call and recognition of visitors, Ms. Schleist. Okay. This evening's visitors include Dick Carter, Mark Ferguson, Sam Ferguson, and Richard Schroeder. Thank you and welcome to the meeting. Sam, good luck to you. Hope you learned something tonight. <laughs> Next item is the open forum. The open forum section of the board agenda is a time for members of the community to provide comments to the board. There will be one open forum period during each regularly scheduled board meeting. Comments are limited to five minutes unless a significant number of people plan to speak. We have no registered speakers for the open forum for the section of tonight's board meeting, so we'll hereby close the open forum. Awards and recognitions, Dr. Sopcich. Uh, Trustee Cook, we have no awards nor recognitions this evening. Thank you very much. College lobbyist report, Mr. Carter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, we're back in Topeka and things have kicked off and it's been an interesting and active past 12 hours or so, and that seems to have been where most of the action is, has occurred during the start of the session. Uh, there's lots of folks that are trying to find their way around the building. There's lots of new corridors and hallways and room numbers uh, as the Capitol restoration is uh, essentially complete. There's still some minor work going on, but we don't see it in the, uh, in the common areas of the Capitol, and it is a beautiful building, and I encourage uh, each one of you to find your way over there during the session at some point this, uh, this year. And I believe that you too will agree that it is, uh, it is amazing uh, what has been done to restore that building. Uh, incidentally, that, uh, the company that, that restored the building is now restoring two other capitals across the nation, in Oregon and in uh, Minneapolis. And so I think, uh, I think certainly uh, the governor touted the, uh, the praises of the finished product, and, and now we've got some competition with some other states perhaps out there. Um, we have seven new representatives that were sworn in on the first day. And just this afternoon, uh, we had a senator that was confirmed for an appointment to the uh, Kansas Corporation Commission. That would be Senator Jay Emler. So we'll be seeing at least one more replacement um, before things sort of become permanent in the way of uh, elected officials in Topeka. <clears throat> the uh, December revenues were, were up just slightly. Again, I always bring that to your attention just so we can pay attention to the budget. We still have uh, outstanding uh, a school finance decision uh, that will um, significantly impact uh, any surplus that the state would have. And, uh, and that's, that will play into, again, uh, the overall discussion. We won't get started in earnest with, with the budget discussions until we know exactly what the, uh, what the court has to say about that. I indicated to you that uh, I would try and pro provide a brief um, synopsis of, of what the budget does look like as the uh, budget documents were just made public today at about 11 o'clock this morning. And, uh, and I have just a few items to report, and hopefully I can read my chicken scratches in the, uh, in the margins. Um, during the current year, there were some uh, restorations to higher education's budget. Um, we did not see any uh, uh, negative impacts. However, the salary cap money for 2014 that was removed from uh, the state universities was replaced. That's about $5.2 million. Uh, there's a $9.3 million increase in money for high school students for the technical education programs. They saw much more increase uh, of student enrollment in that area than they had anticipated, and so a correction was needed in the current year. In 2015, there's going to be about a $15.3 million uh, increase in the uh, technical education uh, programming as it relates to some of those students that are targeted to enroll in those programs uh, while they're still in high school. And then about a $5.8 million increase again for the, the salary cap issue for the state universities. And again, it's important that we pay attention to that because while, while we're not placed with or faced with those salary caps, um, that, that entire conversation impacts things that go on in higher education in Kansas, uh, not to mention, and maybe Dr. Sopchik will, will, will offer a comment, uh, as it's not in my report, but, but Kansas continues to remain uh, in the national spotlight as it relates to academia and higher education with, with the social media policies that are, that are ongoing, uh, or at least being discussed in an ongoing matter. Uh, and that was, that was uh, some information that was just uh, 
obtained this, this uh, week at the uh, Board of Regents uh, meeting, just through casual conversation. There'll be some uh, interesting rule changes that are proposed. Uh, Representative Rubin uh, has proposed a, an unbundling rule. Uh, frankly, this rule is uh, a great one in my uh, eyes because we get lost in trying to figure out how many bills and how many subjects and how many topics are crammed into a conference committee report. And uh, that is a joint uh, uh, resolution that will be decided both by the House and the Senate since it deals with conference committee reports. Um, that no decision has been made, but that is a, uh, a great rule, and, and I commend Representative Rubin for uh, recommending that, that change. Uh, it will certainly make government more transparent, and, and that is something that everyone should desire. Um, the other rule that he proposed was for the House, and that was to make all votes roll call votes or record votes. That one will be interesting to see if that body adopts that. It is an election year. It changes the uh, dialogue. It changes the discussion on the uh, House floor. And uh, when you know that you're voting on something as simple as a one letter, one word amendment, uh, yet it's recorded, um, that might be fine. But then we see other things that come up. And, and if we don't have to have a roll call vote, which there used to be rules about how many roll call votes could be on a certain bill or on a certain <coughs> issue, um, if everything's a roll call vote, uh, all of those votes will be recorded and used for, um, well, they could just be recorded, simply recorded. But they could also be used for postcard votes um, or campaign material. And so again, it'll be interesting to see the debate and dialogue about that particular rule change in the House. I would imagine that it will probably be adopted um, and, and that the House will, will move in that direction. We'll know more uh, later next week the, uh, when they approve the rules. The, um, the governor last night, if you were uh, listening, uh, either online or, or watching uh, on public television, uh, provided the State of the State address. We didn't learn a whole lot of new information. Um, he talked about some of the key points in his uh, proposals uh, this coming year with all-day kindergarten, uh, more university funding, which wasn't really tabulated in the report, but we learned a little bit more uh, today. And there's a lot more detail that I just have not had the opportunity to, to comb through uh, in the budget proposal. Um, and then a rural housing initiative. Those are the three key points that he offered uh, as, as items that uh, he would like to see the, the legislature pass this year. So a little bit of foreshadowing uh, in the way um, of things to come uh, in the governor's initiatives. Uh, Representative Davis, Major uh, Minority Leader Davis, provided the minority report following the governor's state of the state address. And, um, at, and I think as you would expect any candidate to do, talked about the, the policies or the perceived failed policies of the current administration, uh, talked a little bit about education, talked a little bit about some of the funding challenges, and um, I would say probably was a, a fraction of the length of the speech of, of the governors, and I'm not sure what, what type of time frame they provide for um, the minority uh, response. Um, but um, both of those have, have uh, happened, and we're now sort of really starting the, uh, the legislative session. The, uh, the other real story I think that, that most people have been talking about as it relates to campaigns and politics is the recent campaign finance reports. And uh, I think you would have to, to really be um, trying not to pay attention to the news to, to not have seen some of the reports that have been in the media with the uh, um, Davis docking campaign raising about a million dollars uh, in 145 days. Uh, compared to about 1.6 million that was raised um, by the uh, current administration. Um, still a little over $2 million in the campaign account for the governor, but it's going to be, it gave people pause to take a look at, at what was really going on, and, and I don't think anybody expected to see those kind of dollars raised um, uh, by the Davis campaign, at least in this first reporting period. So that'll, that'll continue to be a part of the discussion as we move through the legislative session. <coughs> Um, by, by news or by way of uh, updates from the Board of Regents, uh, Mary Jane Stankiewicz uh, it has announced her resignation and will be leaving to run the Rural Telephone Association of, for Kansas. And so there's going to be a, a vacancy, uh, a void there, uh, at least in the short term, in the Regents office. That will um, certainly make things interesting because higher education is, continues to be a hot topic. Uh, in legislative circles and, and people are either for it or against it and, and so it will be critical that um, 
a person is identified relatively short, uh, shortly at least to fill in in the interim. I've heard uh, that one of the things that they're looking at doing is bringing someone on in a six-tenths capacity. Um, so, so not a full-time uh, position, at least uh, that's, that's what's being proposed perhaps, um, but certainly somebody that's, that's more than, more than half-time. So hopefully we'll learn a little bit more. I don't, I don't know whether that will be uh, an employee, uh, a retired employee, a contract position. Um, that, that information has not been um, shared, at least at this point. This is all just fresh as of a, a few days ago. The, uh, from the federal perspective, um, Congressman Yoder will be visiting uh, next week. Um, we, uh, he wants to tour the uh, HCA building, and so we've uh, set aside some time, and Dr. Sopchik will be greeting him over there for a brief tour and, and sort of a preparatory visit for uh, another visit that we'll be having in Washington, D.C. when we visit the delegation uh, in February. And we'll be taking a couple of students. I think a couple of trustees have indicated interest in, in attending as well. And then we'll be participating in helping coordinate the, uh, the reception, uh, the hospitality reception that we do for the Kansas delegation and for staffers. And so that will be on February uh, 11th, which is a Tuesday uh, in Washington, D.C. And then finally, I think this is the best part of the report. Uh, and, and it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, we've really generated some enthusiasm, at least amongst uh, a couple of the, uh, the representatives. But uh, um, the idea came about as a result of some of the meetings that we had over the course of the fall with our legislators uh, to have a cooking competition uh, amongst the Johnson County delegation. And so uh, the college is, is uh, cited in uh, Representative Gross Roads District and <laughs> Senator Denning's district. We've contacted them about being um, sort of team leaders, if you will. Uh, their eyes started to sparkle, and they uh, they really uh, thought this idea was pretty pretty good. And so we uh, now, uh, and and thanks to to Joe's idea as well, to sort of take it to the next level, um, we'll be meeting with some folks over in um, in the uh, Culinary Academy to talk about what setting this up should look like and how we can do it so that it's a successful event. Um, we'll be inviting the entire Johnson County delegation. This will be occurring during their break, which is later on in April, and so we'll be working to find a date that, that works for everybody. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to raise a lot of uh, awareness about the fantastic program that we have here, and I hope it's the first of, of several competitions to come like this. So I'll stop there. And Dr. Sopcich, you might want to add. Uh, Dick, there was some speculation that our trustees would be the judges for that event. <laughs> Strictly speculation. I think that's part of the uh, details that we'll be hammering out post haste. Any uh, questions of Mr. Carter? Thanks, Dick. Appreciate it. I know that um, it's, it's an interesting time getting started, and some of us don't have the patience of all the steps it takes to get started and get underway. And then at the end, we seem to be rushing to finish everything. So appreciate the update and the input, and uh, have a good game. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> That takes us to the uh, committee reports and recommendations. First one is a management report by Trustee Lindstrom. I might note that uh, your, your, uh, we, we appreciate your unusual attire, uh, Trustee Lindstrom, uh, to explain to the um, viewing audience and the live audience, if you will, uh, Trustee Lindstrom had some surgery, cranial reconstruction, I guess, and uh, <laughs> the doctor said he couldn't expose it for a week, so he... Uh, he did seek and get permission to wear a hat tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Trustee Lindstrom, management report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no disrespect to my colleagues for the hat and, and to the audience, uh, but uh, it is necessary, believe me. Um, please note that the December management committee meeting minutes are on pages 8 and 9 of the board packet. As for uh, January meeting, as for the January meeting, of the management committee. We met at 1.30 on Wednesday, January 8th, here in this room. Trustees Stewart and Musel both had prior commitments and were unable to attend. It was a short agenda with no recommendations to bring to the Board of Trustees. Um, since the meeting was last week, the complete meeting uh, minutes of the meeting will appear in February board packet uh, uh, for the trustees. Uh, there were five presentations at the meeting. Denise Moore, Vice President of uh, Information Services, provided an update uh, on fiscal year 2014 IT infrastructure plan, and that report is shown on pages one through four. Uh, Rex Hayes, Associate Vice President of Campus Services, updated the committee on projects included on the Capital Acquisitions and Improvement Report as shown on page five. 
Uh, Tom Clayton, the Director of Insurance and Risk Management, reviewed the fiscal year 2014 annual report on the college's insurance coverage. His report included a summary outlined uh, of each insurance policy and the associated brokers and underwriters, as well as the annual premium for each policy. Uh, Don Perkins, Vice President of, Vice, uh, of Financial Services, reviewed the semi-annual budget reallocations report for the period July 1st, 2013 through December th 31st, 2013. This report is required by Board Policy 211-01 to be submitted to the Board of, on a semi-annual basis. And finally, Mitch Borches, Associated Vice President of Business Services, reviewed the monthly report on sole sources. I would uh, welcome any comments from others that were in attendance. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Any questions of Trustee Lindstrom? Learning quality, Trustee Lindstrom. Mr. Chairman, there was no learning quality meeting, a committee meeting in January, and therefore is no report. Thank you very much. Uh, Human Resources, Dr. Drummond. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. We met on January 6th at 9.30 and had a, a good meeting. We reviewed the exit uh, interview report, which is very comprehensive, didn't show any unusual information there, but it was very insightful for me because the first one I'd heard or seen. Uh, then we moved on to the benefit RFP status, and we were given an update on the RFP for medical, dental, and vision and flex spending account benefits. I believe the deadline for receiving the RFP was uh, last Friday, and as I understand it, they're reviewing the RFPs that came in, and we should know in the next uh, week or so uh, what the results may be of that. Uh, the biggest item was uh, the benefit task force recommendations, uh, all of which you have heard before, but uh, for the sake of review, I will go through this because it's very, very important. Uh, the, the benefit task force for the audience was established for the purpose of, of creating a solution uh, for our long-term health care sustainability uh, per direction from the current faculty master agreement. The task force consisted of five faculty members, five administrative management employees, and five staff members who met on many occasions to discuss the options and to make a recommendation to the faculty association and the board of trustees. Uh, after considering the various alternatives, the task force uh, made the following four recommendations that I'll read to you. Number one, uh, send out an RFP for health care coverage, uh, a minimum of every three years. And of course, as you just heard me say, one is out right now. Number two, conduct a dependent eligibility audit on the health plan. And number three, develop and implement a stronger wellness initiative for employees. And number four, restructure the health care benefits for new employees resulting in a tiered benefit plan. Uh, the first rec three recommendations are best practices and are in the current process of being implemented throughout the college. Re restructuring of the benefit plan requires the board and faculty association approval. And the proposal covers uh, fiscal year 14 and 15 uh, and includes the following benefit, uh, includes the following. Uh, there are two benefit groups. Benefit one group uh, would include current employees who are automatically grandfathered into the ben benefit group one unless an election is made to benefit uh, group two. Current employees electing benefit group two may not revert to benefit group one at a later date. Uh, once you choose group two, then you stay there. Uh, and if you're a current employee, if you choose to stay with uh, benefit group throughout your life at, uh, at uh, JCCC, you can stay in that group. Uh, flex credits remain at $1,108.94. Employees will pay 25% of the cost of increased health care in fiscal year 14-15 in JCCC will pay 75% of the increase in health care costs in fiscal 14-15. Uh, employees will continue to receive a 7% of base salary contribution to the 403B. Employees will continue to purchase uh, $50,000 of life insurance coverage. Now in bene benefit group two, employees beginning employment after June 1st, 2014 will be part of benefit group two. Uh, JCCC will continue to contribute the uh, equivalent of the full cost of medical insurance for a high deductible plan per employee's benefit election in, in fiscal year 1415. 
employees may pay any cost of the high deductible, high, uh, high deductible, the HDHP, I should say, premium for any of the medical plan election. Uh, fourthly, employees will receive 8% of their base salary contribution to a 403B program. And finally, the employees will receive a $50,000 life insurance uh, paid by JCCC. Uh, so after some review and discussion, and as uh, our trustees know, uh, this has been reviewed by all of us prior to this time. So it's a recommendation of the college administration that the Board of Trustees approve the proposal presented by the Benefit Task Force to restructure the JCCC benefit plan as outlined above. And before I make that recommendation, I want to again uh, express appreciation uh, for myself and I'm sure my fellow trustees and administration for the outstanding work that uh, this group did uh, and they met many times and they dug out a lot of things and and went through a lot of data and came up with uh, what, what I believe is a really excellent recommendation and some options for our all of our staff going forward. With all that said, I would move the recommendation of uh, what I just read. Okay. We, have a, we have a motion and a second. Uh, I would say also, uh, Trustee Drummond, and for the benefit of the viewing audience, uh, we did have a a board retreat workshop on this very topic uh, that lasted a couple of hours with input from uh, the faculty as well. And uh, as Trustee Drummond has said, uh, considerable hours have gone have gone into this topic for study and uh, the recommendation. Are there any questions or comments of uh, Trustee Drummond? Trustee Stewart. Uh, yeah, first question would be, where are we at in the, the faculty association approving, uh, have we, Got a vote they, on that? Or? They are voting, but has it closed yet? Midnight tonight. Okay, it closes at midnight tonight, so we don't know the results of that yet. Good. And I guess maybe just clarify something that I heard in Dr. Drummond's report that I want to make sure uh, this board cannot bind future boards. Uh, I think Dr. Drummond mentioned that for the life of an employee, they could opt for benefit one and stay in group one. I think that's how it is today and under this agreement, but future boards may decide to change that or change these benefit retirement uh, don't, uh, contribution percentages. I just I want to make sure that's clear that I, I support this, but I want to make sure that who knows what future boards do. Okay. Trustee Cross. Yes, Mr. Chair, I just have a quick question pertaining to the purchase of life insurance coverage. Uh, Trustee Musel mentioned at the retreat, uh, notice the difference between the purchasing of the $50,000 life insurance coverage under tier one versus the reception of the same or similar $50,000 life insurance policy paid under uh, tier two or group benefits two. Uh, is, is there any reason why, and, and there was no discussion, uh, very little discussion on this point, uh, and obviously policy was not a place uh, to negotiate or excuse me, discuss at the retreat. So I'm just curious why, if, if we can negotiate lower premiums by through the institution, why we couldn't also do that for Tier 1? I guess that goes to Mr. Drummond. Dr. Korb. Yes. <clears throat> um, tier 1, um, when we originally set up Tier 1 and set up the flex credits, they, they were set up to cover life insurance, health insurance, and dental medical, dental, and, and life. So in all of the discussions that we have had around tier one, um, we've always included the purchase of that life insurance within those flex credits that we're offering. Tier two, we are not, we're separating ourselves from the flex credits, and so we're just paying directly for the premiums, and so we have indicated that we will pay the premium for the, um, life insurance in tier two. One of the things I think was a little bit confusing at the retreat when we talked about it, we talked about, um, or it was mentioned, that life insurance for tier one cost more. We said that than for tier two would be for tier two employees. And that's, that's not really, uh, we pay the same amount for life insurance, the college does, to the life insurance company for all employees. So if it's $5.30 a month, it's $5.30 a month for every employee. 
the where the confusion came in though in tier one when those flex credit dollars were originally set up there was about thirteen dollars set aside in those flex credits for life insurance and so that amount was never reduced the life insurance amount was never reduced even when the premium went down the flex credit dollars that were going to the employee stayed the same the employee was just able then to use that to cover more of their medical premium so I don't know if that that helps understand the difference there but we are paying the exact same amount for life insurance for all employees that we're purchasing it for tier one employees are just getting that amount contributed through their flex credits tier two employees the college will just pay that premium directly well thank that you helps. for that clarification I just was curious and my understanding was different so it was a month ago did that answer your question I suppose in part of me my knowledge of the facts were different though I not okay. on that committee and I'm not saying I have a command of those facts I was just asking for clarification okay. so and I'll be happy to give you more information if you need it sure Thank other you. questions I might just say that that makes sense to me now and I was confused at the retreat but if we're just paying there's not a differential that we're paying to the insurance company we're no. paying the same for everyone so it's not a cost issue there it's just that we are giving that added benefit to the tier one uh, yeah. participants. It's because of the way we, yeah. the flex credits were structured when we originally set them up and that's, so that's why that is. But the, the premium that goes to the insurance company is the exact same amount for every employee. I appreciate the question and, yeah. and I, your answer makes it clear for me. Other questions? Thank you. Other questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, uh, Trustee Drummond. Um, you have other parts of your report. I would just point to uh, page 10. You see uh, uh, our schedule for foreseeable future. And uh, with that, uh, I end the report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, collegial steering uh, is my report. We did meet on January 7th. And again, that is comprised of four faculty, four administrators, and two trustees. Uh, on January 7th, we really focused on a couple of items. Um, one is, is really ongoing, and it has to do with um, communication. Uh, we did talk a lot about our existing InfoServe system and um, how, how difficult and challenging uh, that, that can be and to utilize. And as we got into that discussion, uh, various departments communicate kind of uniquely with each other. Uh, so we were trying to discuss how we can make that system most efficient and consistent uh, as, as a next step kind of uh, process. Uh, Andy uh, Anderson and Lori Paldino uh, have, have taken uh, on themselves the assignment of a special review and try and come up with some recommendations of how we can make our internal communications particularly a little more efficient and, and uh, timely. Uh, so, so we spent about half of the time on that. We also spent uh, considerable time on the calendar uh, that we set with the college. And uh, it, was, it was very interesting that uh, the, the steps we take on the college really not only impact our college, but uh, the, the county high schools rely on where, where we go with our calendar in terms of days off and trying to coordinate so that families within Johnson County uh, uh, can have as efficient of calendars as possible as they look at days off uh, and uh, away from school. Uh, we also work with uh, the four-year institutions to try and uh, align our calendar with them. So setting a calendar isn't as simple as one might seem. And, uh, and I think we all had uh, fun uh, communicating about how complicated that can be when, it, when some of us might think that's a simple process. So I think we, we ironed out some things there, at least understanding. And uh, uh, even, uh, even the president uh, got clarified on why he thought he was the only day he was giving a final and nobody else was around. So uh, kind of interesting dialogue. And, and, and Thank you for enlightening us on that point, <laughs> yeah. Dr. Cook. And good <laughs> communication. But, but again, I would say uh, the Collegial Steering Committee, uh, I, I really feel good about the dialogue we're having and um, talking about the issues. And, Communication is a, is a difficult is a difficult activity between two people, and uh, so trying to uh, 
make sure we understand each other and what we're saying and doing. I think the collegial steering is making good headway there. Uh, I'm sure uh, Dr. Williams might make a comment on that during her report. But that was collegial steering, and uh, again, we meet, uh, we meet each month. Um, President's recommendations for action, uh, Treasurer's report, Trustee Lindstrom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased to present the Treasury's report for the month of November 30th, 2013, which can be found on pages 11 and through 22. Briefly, here are a few highlights. On page 21 at the bottom of the page, please note the cash fund balances. At November 30th, we had a book balance of $60 million with $17.6 million in outstanding encumbrances leaving us with an unencumbered balance of $42.4 million. Uh, during November, the college made si uh, payment number 16 on the series 2006, revenue series 2006 revenue bonds, payment five on the series 2011 revenue bonds, payment number two on the series 2012 revenue bonds, and payment number five on the PEI loan. Uh, revenue bond payments totaled $1,422,486,000, and the PEI payment was $668,289. Expenditures in the primary operating fund are within approved budgetary limits, uh, and it is the recommendation of the college administration that the Board of Trustees approve the Treasurer's report for the month of October I'm sorry, for the month of November 30th, 2013, which can be found uh, again on pages 11 through 22. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Clinical affiliate agreements. Dr. Sopcich. Thank you, Dr. Cook. We have two <coughs> clinical affiliate agreements uh, to recommend this evening. <coughs> the first one involves um, our early childhood education and for credit instruction. The agencies are the Blue Valley School District and the Leanne Britton Infant Development Center in Shawnee Mission, Kansas. The experience is early childhood teaching lab experience. Additionally, there's a hospitality management for credit instruction. The agency is Benton House of Prairie Village and the clinical experience is dietary manager internship. It is the recommendation of the college administration that the Board of Trustees authorize the college to enter into an agreement with the above agency for the clinical experiences indicated for the period January 17th, 2014 through June 30th, 2014. Do we have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any questions? Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the next uh, clinical affiliate agreement is for health and human services um, in the continuing education and organizational development area. The agency is the medicine shop pharmacy and the clinical experience is pharmacy technician. It is the recommendation of the college administration that the board of trustees authorize the college to enter into an agreement with the above agency for the clinical experiences indicated for the period January 17th, 2014 through June 30th, 2014. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Monthly report to the board. Uh, and before you, you have the monthly report to the board dated January 16th. It's um, several pages of, of all the outstanding work that's uh, being conducted here at the college and accomplishments uh, of, of many of our faculty and staff. Additionally, what you have is in front of you is Foresight 2020. Uh, yesterday, Mr. Anderson and I spent the day in Topeka, and today, Dr. Corbin and I spent the day in Topeka, and Andy Tompkins um, reviewed the annual progress report. And what's fascinating about this publication is the array of data that they've put in here, and this demonstrates how the KBOR is evaluating their, their um, I guess, efforts with the six universities as well as the community colleges. In the appendix, back on page 17, they, they break out um, all the institutions, and you can kind of compare one versus the other. So it's really a very interesting piece. I think this might be one of the first years where they've, where they, they've gotten this far. And, and the numbers, to give you just a brief top line, um, everyone's very, it, it's very positive, and things are certainly going in the right direction. So I wanted to share that with you um, this evening. Lastly, I thought we'd introduce a little bit of the lightning round, and we're gonna have some very quick bursts of lightning, and we're gonna start with uh, Dr. Day. Set up there. <clears throat> okay, I'll give you a, a real quick burst, just two numbers, 4.2 and 5.5. I'm done. 
<laughs> Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> So to set that up, if we had had this meeting one week ago, that those numbers would have been 10.5 and 11.5. Those are the numbers of our headcount and credit hours down. That's what we're experiencing in enrollment. Inside of a week's time, uh, we've been able to recover some. Uh, our headcount is down 4.5 and our credit hours is down 5.5 compared to last spring. Okay. Was that 1.5? Percent. Thank you. 4.5 and 5.5. Now, I'm going to put it in context. Uh, we've surveyed our, our sister college systems in Wyandotte County and Jackson County, and, and they're seeing the similar types of downward trends in spring. Uh, some of what has happened for us is timing. Uh, we started early. We started very early this semester. Uh, we had some bad weather as we were getting. We had seven days from the time we got back before first uh, day of classes. So we did an extraordinary thing and we opened up enrollment for Monday and Tuesday. We have a no late registration thing. Uh, in that short period of time, two and a half days, we were able to recover uh, from 8% and 10% to 4 and 5%. So we've done some things very quickly to help manage the, the, the impact. Uh, but I won't, we're still down 4.5 and 5.5 as far as credit hours. And that, that can equate to a, a certain number uh, as far as the budget goes. Questions? Trustee uh, Drummond. Do we have a sense, uh, Dr. Day, yet what those numbers would be in terms of the budget? Uh, sure. Uh, you can do a simple calculation <laughs> of uh, the, the straight numbers and the number of out credit hours. When we're down 5.5 uh, uh, credit hours, then we can do a straight calculation on the $84. So it's, that's gonna represent up close to, I wanna say 650,000. That's just top of the head stuff. Thank you. Trustee Stewart? Yeah, historically we've been counter cyclical to the, any recovery or the economy where if the economy goes bad, where enrollment goes up, economy gets better, we lose students. So I guess the question that we probably don't have an answer to right now is that what we're seeing now is that we are seeing a growing economy locally that's causing uh, students that before had the time to come to school are now employed. What we know on a national basis, this is a trend. Uh, higher education is down. Uh, what we know in the Midwest, it's down even more than the coast. So absolutely, you're, you're right. The, the unemployment is is fantastic compared that's my to. Sense, but, that's uh, but that's part of it. Yeah. And then there are some things that we have to do ourselves to help out as well. And we have a lot of competition, maybe more so than we've ever had. The, the landscape is certainly different than it was, yeah. you know, a few years ago. It has uh, increased exponentially in the last few years, just in this address. Yeah. Do we have a uh, <clears throat> Do we have a way of validating online course infringement upon coming to campus registration yeah uh, only ours uh, and I think we're fairly steady on that and we, we can we can look into those numbers a little harder I would uh, expect that to be another impact. Uh, but uh, I, I think the intrusion would be more of the other institutions online uh, it, I'll, I'll just give you one example there's a, a school in the East Coast uh, the southern part of that state that starts with an H, uh, that is advertising in this market. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? Starts with an H or starts with an M? Mm -hmm. H. Oh, perfect. I've been seeing New Hampshire. Oh. I advertise Southern New Hampshire. Yeah. Southern New Hampshire University. Uh, so it's uh, that's new, uh, and that's a, a purely online uh, jump into it to Dr. Cook's point. So yeah, there's uh, there's plenty of competition, but again, there are some things that we can do ourselves as well. Other questions? Just a comment perhaps. I, I think the trend that we're facing, which is a national trend, it's a Midwest trend and it, it's probably a Kansas City Metro trend, suggests to us that you know we can just accept it, or we can probably proactively take a look at it and see if there are things we can do to enhance our ability to recruit more students, market more students, 
whatever the case may be. So with the trend, I, and from the projections I've seen, the trend is going to continue somewhat. It started and it continued. And I'm just wondering whether we should uh, take a closer look at it as a board in terms of what we might be able to do to address this and try to abate it before it goes too deep and frankly costs us a lot of money. Very nice segue, by the way. Right. Um, for one thing, at the next management committee, Dennis and his team will be pr providing some greater insights into the situation. Um, last week, when we got that report, which was, uh, it was, it was pretty eye-opening, eye um, it really kind of uh, caused us to act. I mean, one of the things that we all know is that we had a huge jump in enrollment. Was that 08 or 09? 09. Almost 10 percent. In a way, we've been correcting ourselves, and you have this national trend. Um, but the fact is, this will be the sixth semester, consecutive semester of enrollment decline. And so we immediately called some folks together and um, we've uh, kind of put together a, a group to start really checking into some things that we need to do, as Bob mentioned, to be more proactive. And Judy's going to take us uh, through that. Um, yeah, certainly enrollment has been a topic of conversation in groups all across campus and different groups have started doing things or, or looking into what, what could we do about it. And so we are going to organize a collective effort to come up with a plan so that we're looking at it and making sure that everything that we're doing aligns. But obviously this affects, affects instruction, um, what we're offering, when we're offering it, how we're offering it, all of those kinds of things, as well as enrollment and engagement, the, the student aspect, the student experience, and you know just getting them here. So we know that there are trends. There are certain things that are external factors that, that we probably can't impact. But we also know that there probably are things that we can do. And so we're going to take a look at those and kind of divide up into some subgroups and, and check into those things and then try to come back together with a collective plan. And we're looking at trying to put some initial plan together in the next four to six weeks that could potentially even impact changes for fall. So. Thank you. Trustee Lindstrom. The 4.5 is the head count. What does that correlate to numbers? Uh, Number of students? That would be about 16,000 students right now. We're still in. Total? Yeah. Okay. For now. Uh, that's comparative to this time last year. Okay. This spring. No, that's not the final number for the semester. Okay. <coughs> Trustee Sharp? <coughs> Trustee Cross? Yeah, I just want to really echo. <coughs> Trustee Drummond's comments and would actually ask to have participation. And I don't really see this at odds with the Regents or anybody uh, with respect to our partners in state here because in my own clientele, friends and families, uh, I, I don't think this problem could be overstated. I mean, I think we are market participants that are getting outflanked by competitive uh, competitors. Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, I have a brother who got a, his degree online through Fort Hayes. I know K-State has historically had wonderful programs online, uh, and I could be corrected as to who else offers programs in state, but I, I don't see this at odds with the Regents or any of our, our strategic partners here in state. I, I just do think that we need to do a better job of it. It's no statement to you or the administration. It's just, frankly, one of my uh, things I wanted to comment on. So. Okay. I'd like to compliment, uh, Dennis, the uh, effort to uh, add two extra days, I mean, to reduce that gap by Four percent and five percent is is, re, is remarkable in a two-day effort. So I appreciate you doing that. What's exciting about this is that we have to act, and so we have to have these things impact or try to impact the fall semester. So we don't have that much time to talk, but we have to get it together and implement. So that's really exciting. In fact, um, it's exciting just watching some of the things that are happening around here. Um, I talked to Lenora Cook. She's the Dean of Healthcare Professionals and Wellness, and she shared with me this experience. She had attended uh, three healthcare expir exploration classes at Shawnee Mission South, approximately 75 students. When you go to these things, you pass out information, and they give cards, they sign up. You know, she collected the cards, brought them back, and before she turned them over to admissions, she distributed them to her directors and said, call these students who have an interest. That's the type of engagement, that's the type of outreach that we need to do. And she did that on her own. And when you see people stepping forward, that's what is pretty exciting to watch. Uh, we had a foundation executive board meeting the other night. Deb Williams was talking about some of the things that she's been doing as far as reaching out, trying to collect information. Dr. Antle talked about um, perhaps looking at an online class for Kansas history. And so when you go throughout the college, you see people rallying 
trying to do things that could positively impact enrollment. And that's <coughs> terrific. And so that's why I think at this point in time, the enrollment is a great challenge, but it's also a great opportunity for this college to demonstrate how it can respond and get ahead of the game. So we're looking forward to, we're looking forward to next semester. And that concludes our report. Trustee Drummond, thank you for uh, challenging us. So that's uh, timely and, and uh, we'll follow up with that. Thanks, Dr. Korb, for initiating <coughs> some actions and Dr. Sopcic for your report. De uh, thank you, Dennis, for the information. I don't believe we have any old business tonight and I don't believe we have any new business. Uh, report from board liaisons. The first is the Kansas Association of Community College Trustees. Uh, we have not met since the last meeting. Um, I would just reinforce uh, Mr. Carter's report that uh, KACCT will be attending uh, the event in Washington in February. And uh, Dick, I'd like to thank you for taking the lead on hosting the reception for the members of KACCT on the 11th. Uh, we do have a, um, an event in Topeka. I believe it's on the 8th for the Phi Theta Kappa Luncheon. Um, if, if any of you have not attended that or would like to attend, I think if you talk to Dr. Sopcich, uh, the, the uh, KACCT will have a meeting that day. Uh, it's not the 8th, though. It's the uh, following Wednesday. It's the 13th. And um, that's in Topeka. That concludes my report for uh, KACCT. Um, Mr. Musil obviously is not here. I don't know if we have a report on the Johnson County Research Triangle. Anybody have a comment, report on that? Uh, foundation report, Trustee Cross. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The uh, Foundation Executive Committee met Tuesday, January 14th, 2014 in Galileo Pavilion. And uh, a fine presentation was made by uh, Professor Jay Antle, who's the Executive Director of the Center for Sustainability and a Professor of History, as you all know, but I threw in for the online audience, or the television audience. Um, he gave a presentation and an overview of the college's uh, sustainability efforts and, frankly, the resulting financial savings and benefit to the college. It was an excellent presentation. I just wanted to comment on that again. Uh, Mr. Steve Wilkinson reported that the Board Development Committee is evaluating candidates for the 2014 and 2015 board slate. That will be the recommendation for members and directors uh, to be presented at the directors' meeting in March. Nominations for the 2014 Johnson County of the Year have been collected and the selection committee meets soon on that issue. And then finally, the foundation will be holding their annual employee block party in March and this event is to recognize all faculty and staff who uh, have made a contribution uh, during the calendar year. The foundation would like to invite all of the trustees uh, to drop by and help celebrate uh, the contributions of the faculty and staff. Uh, that date and time will be determined later. And this concludes my report. <coughs> Any questions of Trustee Cross? Thank you very much. Thank you. Faculty Association, Dr. Williams. Well, hello, everyone. And um, as usual, I, I came to the meeting thinking, well, I'll have a brief report. And after sitting here listening um, to lots of comments, I now have a longer report. Um, well, I guess I'll start by saying, you know, we're only 16 days in, so I'm going to say Happy New Year. <laughs> uh, we have certainly, um, spring 2014 is off to a good start. We um, are very happy about a lot of the exciting activities that have already occurred in the past four days and all that we have planned um, for the rest of the semester. Um, we hit the ground running as a faculty association at the all-faculty meeting. Um, with um, our, we discussed two items of, of importance. One was mentioned earlier tonight that require uh, full bargaining unit votes, and, and one is the benefit uh, restructuring or recommendations from the, um, the joint uh, task force on benefits. And um, the, the vote is still ongoing until midnight tonight, uh, but it's trending toward approval. And so um, I think that's as much as I can say at this time. But um, it generated significant discussion on the listserv and at the all faculty meeting. Um, but again, I think to echo what's already been said, there was a substantial amount of work um, that brought that recommendation uh, to us. And um, as I commented at the all-faculty meeting, you know, anyone who's ever negotiated a contract understands complexities of a lot of issues, but this was a very complex one. And to appreciate the work that went into bringing us to where we are, um, I can't say enough about the work that that 15-member group um, did to bring us to the place where we are actually we can actually take a vote. Um, with regard to collegial steering, um, I didn't have a lot that I was planning to say, but I, I guess I would echo um, you know, 
Trustee Cook's um, comments about communication, how that's been an ongoing um, issue of interest, concern, and celebration, really, because from my view, communication has improved substantially. And the fact that we have dedicated you know, meetings with time allocated for improving communication speaks volumes to the, um, you know, the recognition how important that is to get uh, through some of the challenges that we, we have before us and the work that, that needs to be done. So um, I'm, again, happy that we have collegial steering back in the, in the form that it's in and uh, look forward to future discussions as well. By the way, Trustee Lindstrom, I really like the hat. <laughs> I want one. I, was, I, I commented to Vin that if I, I had one, I would wear one in solidarity. So. Thank you. <laughs> um, so with regard to the benefit vote, again, that's in progress. And then the other item, as I referred to, that is ongoing, and I'm looking forward to its completion, is our discussion surrounding the discipline area uh, clarification in Section 8 of the Master Agreement. Uh, two more groups have come in as far as reporting where um, they want us to, what they want us to do with their particular groups. Uh, one of them was one of the more um, challenging or substantial, contrib I mean, their conversations uh, took a lot of, of time and deliberation, and so I was happy to see that they as a group worked out um, something that we can work with as we move forward with that effort. I plan on sending a, a note out to the faculty with a, we have a hard deadline of March 4th, and I'm going to send out a soft deadline of February 15th, and I think we can meet it and have a little bit of turnaround time to have any lingering clarification that we need, and then Tanya and uh, the administrative group and I will have probably more discussions about um, where to take that to get that task completed so we can get that off the, the plate. Um, with regard to the focus on enrollment, I was happy that that came up tonight because it came up in our, uh, we had an executive council meeting for faculty senate. And um, I actually suggested that we consider putting that item on the senate agenda. It will certainly be an item on the faculty association uh, meeting agenda to discuss ways that faculty can contribute to understanding and potentially addressing those enrollment uh, declines. I think, as I saw tonight, there's a lot of, there are a lot of ideas and some that's actually known in terms of national trends and data that supports that. But there's also a lot of speculation as to why we are um, facing a 4.5% decline. And I'm happy to hear that we <laughs> brought it down to that based on where we were about a week ago. But there, there are probably some answers there that we don't have and we need to ask the right questions. And, and certainly as a faculty group need to recognize that it impacts us whether, as I said at the foundation meeting, uh, business is booming in our area or uh, we're struggling um, in certain respects. So we want to, as a faculty group, do our part to ask those questions, be a part of asking those questions, literally, um, and crafting possible uh, responses. Um, online has been thrown out, and I've talked to students, and, and that's certainly I've gotten some feedback as to uh, how that might be welcomed, actually, or hybrid classes, or intercession classes, or delivery formats. And so I can say personally in my informal uh, polling of the audience before me, uh, the students I interact with, I have some ideas. But there's only one of me, and there's 358 full-time faculty, and, and I have lost count of how many <laughs> adjunct faculty we have. But we have a lot of faculty um, potential uh, impact and input based on the fact that they're out there talking to students. And um, we actually, at the foundation meeting, um, had a faculty senate, or the student senate president, Elliot Rogers, um, there. And he is also interested in being involved in this effort. So Judy and I will probably be in touch to talk about how the FA, or he can come to our FA meeting, and, and tell us how we might better um, help with that administrative effort. So again, the faculty um, association meeting, we moved them to Tuesdays this semester by popular request. So our first one is next week, Tuesday, uh, January 21st at 2 p.m. in the Virginia Krebs Room, which is CC 107. Um, the agenda items are, are you know, being um, developed. Uh, more and more items are being added <laughs> as the days go on. But certainly the enrollment a decline issue was uh, on the agenda, and so we welcome any and all who wish to attend and participate in, in that discussion. Um, I'd like to close with um, actually a feature story that's on our website. This was called to my attention by a colleague. Uh, maybe some of you have read it. There's feature articles, and this one is titled Finding Something Better. And it features uh, a student named Vincente Silva, um, who 
is here studying uh, essentially automotive technology, but it talks about his background in, um, he had a, uh, essentially a gang and, and kind of a troubled background growing up. Um, he, he didn't think he would be a high school graduate, let alone a college, um, you know, a candidate to graduate from college. But um, it really, if you read the article, and I want to read it to you, but it features in particular the um, counseling center. And one counselor in particular, Gloria Rosso, who connected with uh, Vincente and helped him um, essentially see the value of attending college and attending this college in particular. And the story says, you know, in the words of Vincente um, she, about his application process, and she really wouldn't let him put it off. And I'm going to read this part because I think it, it's powerful. Uh, she, conv she convinced, she listened, and she convinced me. So right then, that he needed to attend college. We filled out a college application, uh, Silva said. She tried, no, she didn't try, she did. She made a personal connection. She said, here's my card, come see me, and she's been working with me ever since. And I don't think you have a better ambassador for recruitment than a student like that who um, can speak to you know, dramatic changes in his own life and point to people that he made a connection, an ongoing connection with, on the front lines you know, as the counseling um, perfect personnel are. And so I thought that would be a good way to close. That kind of wraps up our theme of recruitment and what we can do and how we can be build numbers. And I think a lot of it has to do with recognizing the efforts that are going on right now and letting our students be our ambassadors to the extent that they can because students listen to other students, whether it's you know, recommending a course or an instructor that they had a positive experience with, or in this case, an institution that that particular student didn't even think that they were um, capable of or um, was even accessible to them. So on that note, I think I will close and take any questions that you might have. Any questions of uh, Dr. Williams? Uh, a couple of things that I would like to say. Um, I, I uh, through collegial steering and the time that I'm spending with different committees and so on, I, I think that it's really difficult to be a leader of any organization or any group particularly if you um, promote diversity of opinion. And I've often said we should never fear differing viewpoints. We should fear our lack of ability to deal with differing viewpoints. And uh, you're in a very difficult position. You mentioned the 358 faculty plus a few adjuncts. And, and uh, all of those people are trained to have a point of view uh, and to represent what it is they teach or advocate. And so I just want to thank you for having a balanced sense to the leadership, trying to deal with your own teaching responsibilities at the same time of trying to reflect what a, what a organization, a faculty organization, believes should be happening in the best interest of the faculty. So I appreciate that, Debbie, and I know it's a difficult role to play. I would also like to acknowledge you and Dr. Antel, and I'm at risk for violating a, a, a rule of mine. I don't think there's anybody else in the audience that's on the panel. Uh, next Friday for the uh, the Buffalo King, the the film about the demise of the buffalo. Uh, next Friday at noon and at seven o'clock, uh, that will be featured in the Hudson Auditorium at the Nerman Museum. And uh, Dr. Anto and Dr. Williams are um, two of I think four or five panel members that will be addressing the issues of that film uh, following uh, the presentation. So I applaud you for taking on that role as well, Trustee Cross. Yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, uh, President Williams, is there any exit polls on the voting on the bargaining? Uh, in terms of a status report? Or? Yeah, in terms um, of the, the, the approval of the benefit package? Um, I, I can just say at this point it's trending towards approval. Um, we had a, a significantly high number um, as of two days ago. <laughs> and so my best guess is, is that the um, recommendations will be um, approved by the faculty. So I was curious and I had a feeling some of my colleagues might be. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Trustee Stewart, you look like you had a, a, a notion. <laughs> no, I just wanted to note the Buffalo King uh, <laughs> next Friday, the 24th. Thank you, uh, Dr. Williams. Well, Appreciate thank it you much. so much for your thank kind you. words, and we'll see you next month. <laughs> next item is the consent agenda. It's a time when we uh, deal with a number of routine manners. Are there any items that a trustee would like to have pulled from the consent agenda? Any items to be pulled? Uh, seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have no executive session tonight.
Trustee Mr. Cook. Yes, sir. Chairman. I just want to comment uh, that I would like to commend Trustee Lindstrom for showing up injured. He had the bulk of the committee reports that he made. He filled in for me for the management committee, learning quality and the treasury report. And uh, I just want to make sure that he knew we recognized that effort. Flattery will get you everywhere. Fuse <laughs> <laughs> bleeding on the back side of your head. <laughs> so I appreciate it. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Aye. Thank you.